Tonight, we're talking about how do Christians, you and I, okay, I'm not going to talk about the church, the modern church. I'm not going to talk about some preacher somewhere uh, out preaching a feel-good, you know, Disneyland uh, sermon. I'm talking about you and I. We're in the trenches. We're soldiers. How do we, how do God's people deal with demonized people as we come closer to Halloween? We're going to see things happen. And as each Halloween, Jesus doesn't come back, each Halloween unfolds. We're going to see some more, even more horrific things as we come into these days of lying signs and wonders. My guest, uh, Dr. Greg Reed. Uh, Greg, you there with me, buddy? Right here. Okay. Okay, so demonized people. Um, Can you describe what's the characteristics of a demonized person? What do we mean by that? Well, you know, from a scriptural standpoint, there are degrees. You know, we tend to think of uh, demon-possessed people, so our minds immediately go, Linda Blair, you know, head spinning 360. But there are degrees of demonization, as we call it, where a person might be infiltrated to some degree. It might be someone, and we talk about things in churches. Uh, I have seen people that normally in their everyday life are very good people. They are trying to follow the Lord to some degree, but something else gets a hold of them. And in conversation, all of a sudden they will drop something that is so ugly and demonic. It just in a phrase, and I'm just looking at them like, do you even know what you said? So there's that kind of thing where the devil can influence the way that we sometimes talk. But when we're talking about a more severe form of demonization, it's pretty easy to see when someone's that their eyes are changed. Uh, there's a look in the eyes. There's a change in the eyes, a uh, change in the vocal, uh, the way that they speak to you. Uh, there's any number of things, and it all depends on the degree in which they have been uh, touched. There's very few people what uh, they call perfect possession, that they're totally taken over. But I've seen all degrees down from that that can be any number of manifestations through that person. Yeah. So I think what you're saying is two different things. We talk about oppression, which was the first category that you mentioned, where demons are are around a person and oppressing, pushing on a person. The second one is when a demon is inside of a person, where a person has very little control. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. And there's some degrees up from that that are, you know, that, that a person may maintain somewhat of a normal outward life most of the time. And then something will just kick off and they will begin to blaspheme yeah. or they will begin to uh, rage or just, uh, you know, manifest in some other ways, maybe have a physical uh, manifestation like that. So it's, I mm-hmm. wish, uh, I wrote a, a fairly uh, long book on this, 450 pages, just scratching the surface on all of this, because I'm certainly not an expert. But the one thing I learned in the midst of this is, uh, it's not cut and dried like we wish it was. If it was, it would yeah. be much easier to deal with these things. Having yeah. said that, there's an easy way to deal with it, and that is simply if Jesus Christ lives in you and you're walking in the Spirit, then whatever is living in other people is going to recognize that. And at some point, it's probably going to react to who Jesus is in you in manifest, and that's the clash point at which we deal with it. Yeah. You know, Greg, here's what I want to dig into, okay? Uh, because I, I struggle with this myself. We have, we get, we get hung up in this oppression uh, possession thing. And I tell people, don't get hung up in that. Don't, don't tell me you want some kind of metal badge because you're just oppressed and not possessed. I mean, we're still talking about demonic warfare, okay? Um, but a person can be oppressed to the point where they're actually losing control, okay, i.e. addiction, i.e. anger. Uh, it, it, do you agree with that? I, I absolutely agree. Uh, at some point, I kind of had, a, I think, a pretty good picture 
of how this actually works for Christians who get hung up on this point, because we're, we're, we're built like the temple of God. You know, it says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, you know, mm-hmm. so that's body, soul, spirit. It's like the inner, it's like the Holy of Holies and the, and the inner court and the outer court. Our bodies are the outer court and they can very definitely be touched by demonic things. That's where some illnesses come from uh, and some attacks in that way. And uh, the inner court is like our psyche. It's like our, our thoughts, our emotions. And if anybody's been a Christian for long enough, you know you've had thoughts or you've had emotion that's like, oh my gosh, that's not me. I don't know where that came from. Uh, and there are levels of that. Now, I believe with all of my heart, if Jesus lives in our heart, the Satan and no demon can enter that because that is the holy of holies. But yeah. for, up from that, there are levels where even Christians can be controlled by these things if they don't keep the doors shut. Okay. Okay. So I, I want to ask you about Halloween. Is Halloween a special time for demons? And if so, why? It's a special time for demons um, because it, the sources, of course, in every culture has a different uh, a take on that, but it's a time when at least in a human sense, people's thoughts turn to darkness and scariness and evil things and ghosts and goblins and all that. All of the elements in Halloween have are rooted in real world rituals uh, going all the way back to Druid times when that was known as uh, uh, Samhain, when they believed that the gates of the dead were opened up and all these spirits entered into our plane and that mm-hmm. they had to put on masks to scare those spirits away so they wouldn't possess them. Every element from bobbing out for apples to the jack-o'-lantern is rooted in old world, particularly drug, uh, uh, druid paganism. Having said that, the, the Wiccan world, the witchcraft world, and the world of Satanists, whether they're you know, poser, Levian type Satanists or whether they're real world Satanists, they honor that day as a day that they can call on their form of whatever Satan or wickedness to empower them. So we find, and this surprises some people, Halloween is not the first most, most important date on their calendar. Actually, May 1st is April 30th, May 1st. But Halloween is a very high up on the calendar. And I can promise you horrible things happen to children okay. on that night. Let's talk about May 1st. What is it about May 1st, that time period that's important to demons? It, on the calendar, it's known as Walpurgisnacht. Uh, and it's the prelude to May Day. And it's, you know, we hear that phrase May Day, but those dates are very important to the world of the occult. They believe that the, the demonic realm, some of these groups, is at its very height on that day and concluding with May 1st. And so you see a lot of honoring that, you know, you see the, that's just a very powerful date for them in terms of, and for us, the date, uh, ritual crimes, occult related crimes were at a premium during that two day period. And we were always watching the news for unusual acts of violence or uh, occult type uh, crimes taking place. Wow. And so, before we go to a break, my last question uh, for you, we're talking to Dr. Greg Reed, who uh, devotes his life to, uh, well, to exposing the occult and uh, educating uh, Christians uh, as to what this really, what's behind this, what it really looks like. And I'm going to touch on this when we come back, but I want to bring it up uh, just before we take a break, is satanic ritual abuse. Satanic ritual abuse, and real quick for you guys that have just joined uh, with me, um, it's SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse. It is a, um, it's a procedure. It's, a, um, it's many things, but it's basically when you have one or more individuals and they're repetitiously doing something, honoring Satan while abusing, and it can be abusing from an animal to a child, to a person, it's usually under the realm of a coven, but it doesn't have to be. So, Greg, my question is, 
during Halloween, is satanic ritual abuse elevated during this time of year? It absolutely is. And it's the children that are most at risk because the people that do these things believe that the innocence of a child and sacrificing that child at the height of its innocence and the height of its pain is where they receive the most quote unquote magical energy or power. So yeah, children are most at risk, I think, during that time. Yeah. And so with Halloween, when the children are out, and you can pull up the stats on this, but from the time of right before Halloween till the end of the year, you'll see there are more children disappear, uh, depending on what country you're in, because not every country celebrates this, than any time of the year. And when we come back, I'm going to ask Greg how, and I got to be careful how I ask this, but when there is satanic ritual abuse happening, uh, let's take around uh, Halloween, what does that look like? He talked about they were interested in children. How in the world would they ever find their victim? And what does that satanic abuse look like? So when we come back, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Mike Spaulding, and I'm going to ask him, since COVID, since churches aren't coming back, the ones that do, should they really be celebrating trick or trunk or some you know, derivative of Halloween. I mean, is God okay with that? Stay with me. We'll be right back. If you're like me and you're tired of organized religion, the same kind of preacher preaching feel-good sermons, I'm a mom raising two kids, and I want them to hear the truth. I'm a gatherer right here on David Heavener Live every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern where we learn what it means to be a real Christian, to cast our demons, heal the sick, and fight the good fight. I'm not famous, and I'm certainly not rich, but I am a child of the living God, and I stand on truth. I hope you'll join me and many others right here on David Heavener Live, where we learn to use our God-given power. I've come to chew gum and kick the devil's rear end, and I'm all out of gum. They've made many, many movies about aliens, but the question is, are they angelic or demonic? Why don't they want to acknowledge uh, the supernatural? Uh, the seminary education today, that when pastors are being trained, there's no emphasis on the supernatural, even though the Bible's a supernatural book. As in the days, days of Noah, Noah so it will be. Yeah. And it goes down to, well, what is their ultimate purpose? Inaugurate the Antichrist. 